everyone, my name is Josh from Jurassic, and welcome to another suggested video. Sorry that I'm moving around so much. Give me a second. Um, today's suggested video is Nexpo again. This one was an actual suggested video. This one was a legit uh, title someone wanted me to watch. So today's video is called Disturbing Things from Around the Internet, Volume 12. Uh, another Disturbing Things, last Disturbing Things was... Amazing. I loved it to pieces. Uh, this one's 36 minutes long. I didn't look at that until now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Here we go. You guys ready? 36 minutes long. Anyways, guys, as always, if you enjoy this kind of content, consider leaving a like on the video. It'd be very much appreciated. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Josh, and this is what I do. I react to videos, and sometimes I play video games. Some so if you enjoy that kind of content, consider leaving a like on the video. Nope, wait. Ah, oh, I tried to I I tried to do it as fast as I possibly could this time, but it didn't work. So I have to do it at normal speed. Anyways, guys, as always, if you enjoy this kind of content, consider leaving a like on the video. It'd be very much appreciated. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Josh, and this is what I do. I react to videos and sometimes I play video games. So if you enjoy that kind of content, consider subscribing and sharing my videos with your friends so they may grow. We can all watch and play some awesome videos and video games together. And if you have any suggestions of any videos you'd like me to watch, go down in my comments below, leave me the link or title to the video, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Now, without further ado, let's begin. Why do I feel like he just stole that from the beginning of some movie? <laughs> Nonetheless, it looks great. I love it. Oh, it's good. The internet can be a grim place. Oh, you're not going to type anything? Oh. Surely you don't need someone like me to tell you that. Oh, did you see the pizza place? The videos, live streams, works of art, posts, and pages about disturbing events that have happened in our reality Ooh. are nothing but a Google search away. Facial recognition. Underneath the no commentary long plays and the fast lane truck drag racing videos exists a vast ocean of eerie content that'll surely get <laughs> you thinking. Fast lane truck just drag wondering. race? <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's legit. Keep you up at night. Why would you, why would you drag race trucks? Welcome back to disturbing. Actually, things. you know what? That sounds Your great. Your <laughs> bite-sized eerie finds that I've recently discovered online. This is episode twelve. So, if this is your first exposure to this, no, series, this is like my be sure to head over second. to the playlist down below for hours of further content to envelop yourself into. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to watch every single one of those because. Without further ado. So far, this has been amazing. Once again, I mean, just the first one was more. great. I loved it to Can't pieces. If you, don't, if you haven't watched the first one, I suggest you go watch that. From around the internet. From around the internet. I wish I had the, uh, the annunciator's voice. The. The announce, the annunciator. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, this content video is disturbing, may upset some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. You've been advised, by the way. So have I, so. Skittles? I saw Skittles. Anybody else see Skittles? Nice old TV noise. Let's set the mood. I like that. You already, you just set the, you're setting more mood. It's loud. On the internet. Turn it down. There exists an album by the name of Everywhere at the End of Time. It was created in 2016 by a musical artist named James Leyland Kirby. Was he high at the time? Also known by a stage name, The Caretaker. While I'm aware that on this show, I primarily cover real world disturbing events. Smoked. I wanted to discuss this piece of art since it perfectly encapsulates the disturbing reality of over 44 million people that are alive today. No, he smoked a ton of weed. As you might have guessed by now, <laughs> the album's an artistic expression of the numerous stages of dementia and how it slowly overtakes the mind. Yeah, I guess. it spiraling into a wormhole of forgetfulness. Yeah. Twisted by reality. I definitely. further and further from recognizing. I definitely guessed that. Yeah. Dementia is such a weird thing, ain't it? Starts off ordinary. I mean, it's not actually that it's really cheery, weird. Calm, and invokes a sense of comfort. Makes sense. As the it? hours pass and it progresses, Leyland subtly morphs not only the overall tone, 
but each chord progression and tune into something that hardly resembles what you were listening to a mere half hour earlier. No, it should be more sad. The descriptions from his YouTube video further exemplify the troubles that dementia patients face too. Stage one is described as the first signs of memory loss. It's a stage that's most like a beautiful daydream. The glory of old age and recollection. The last of the great days. So I guess you just remember good times? What? Stage two encapsulates denial. More efforts made to remember so memories can be more long form with a little more deterioration in quality. The overall personal mood is generally lower than the first stage and at a point before confusion starts setting in. Didn't Jack Septicai's grandmother have dementia? She didn't suffer from cancer, but she had dementia. And he told he said a very sad story of Stage how she Stage three approaches the metaphorical it. inflection point. It's described as the phase where some of the last coherent memories exist before confusion fully rolls in and the gray mists form and fade away. Finest moments have been remembered, but the musical flow in places is more confused and tangled. As we progress, some singular memories become more disturbed. Isn't there a meme where it's like guy with dementia forgets that he has dementia and is cured? If someone knows that meme, please tell me. <laughs> please tell me what it's called. <laughs> Isolated, broken, and distant. These are the last embers of awareness before we enter the post-awareness stages. God, I can't remember, but I feel like that's what it was called. Maybe that was. Maybe that's what the meme was called. I don't know. I have no idea. At the two hour and eight minute mark, the album takes a stark tonal shift <laughs> as it begins to exemplify the post-awareness stages. The spot where reality becomes a bleak, confusing mess, and where little seems How to How do you sense. know this, though? It's described How do you know it's not just a blissful forgetment? You know, ignorance is bliss? How do you know it's not horror. them just being ignorant? It's the beginning of an eventual process where all memories begin to become more fluid through entanglements, repetition, and rupture. Flu Wait, so they become more fluid so you lose them easier? I guess? Is that is that what you mean? Stage 5. Is that what you mean? More extreme entanglements, repetition, and rupture can give way to calmer moments. The unfamiliar may sound and feel familiar. Time is often spent only in the moment, leading to isolation. See, you wanna, you wanna know something that's not actually entirely so scary. Animals live moment by moment. Uh, there's this great, great speaker named by. Um, What's his name? Alan Watts. Alan Watts. Alan Watson. Alan Watts. Something. Um, great, great speaker. Oh my God. And he has this very, very, very interesting speech where he talks about how uh, humans are the only species who recognize that then and now they live on a linear, on what can be calculated as a linear plane of existence, also known as time. They live, they live on a linear time. They can see their life before them. And it's an extraordinary ability, he says in the uh, thing. It's an extraordinary ability, but humans tend to get caught up in this ability, you know? Uh, they seem to continue to live for a future that is not right now in their best, or that is not right now in the present uh, affecting them. Uh, and they let it affect them, and it's a bad thing. Um, and then he goes to explain, this is where I'm going to connect it to the video, he goes to explain how animals... For the relative sense, live moment by moment. They don't really have a very strong memory, he says. They don't really have a very strong memory. They live moment by moment, you know? They don't look at a carcass and say, oh, I guess one day that will happen to me. No, they look at it, sit if it, see if it's good to eat, and wander away, um, as he says. And so 
living moment by moment is not a terrible thing. Now, dementia is a terrible thing because you do lose past memories. Um, and in it of itself, animals, I guess, have a, some sort of small dementia because they don't remember everything, obviously. If they remembered, if they had memories like us, they would um, probably have formed some kind of civilization. Uh, thanks to our memories, we have been able to create speech, you know, blah, blah, blah. Speech, stories, we've been able to translate or converse, you know, it's, it's, it's all, it's all a big thing, but, um, so I mean, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a very sad thing. It's a very sad thing to have. You basically, it's a very sad thing, but I don't know. I don't know how to put it. At least now, you know, you are not plagued by thoughts of death you know you don't know what's happening to you i guess which is i guess in some way you could say ignorance is bliss or you could say ignorance is depressing i don't know you technically don't know what's going on and as long as you're cared for i mean do you really care i don't know i don't know it's very very weird very very weird disease because it messes with our physio, it messes with our uh, uh, concept of uh, of who we are as a species. You know, we are who we are because we can remember things, and we have, you know, we have evolved beyond animals to where we express emotions, and you know. We have made a thing that, assist, we've made a thing called society, and it's amazing. And in order to be a part of that society, though, you, this disease completely removes you from it. You can no longer be a part of a society if you have dementia, which sucks. That sucks. And then, you know, it's very sad. It's very sad. It's very weird and very... It's very weird, weird, weird disease. But I'm getting off topic. Besides, we have like, what, 30 more minutes of this? Sorry for my giant rant. You gonna move on? In stage six. God, he's so loud. One without description. I feel like I have to yell. One without description is because you can't describe because you've lost. On memory? I don't know. I feel like if you just type in ambient noises and throw it all together, you get this. He was like, let me just throw all ambient noises that he can find for free on SoundCloud. I lost my great grandmother to dementia just that, a few years ago. That is sad. So this album really resonated with me. Lost her. So As a child, died. I remember her being full of life, always willing to go the extra mile to evoke a sense of union and love. Mm. Whether it was through her cooking, her stories, or even her presence at family gatherings. That's what you must remember. She was always someone that welcomed us with open arms when we go visit her. Yes. She lived alone. My great-grandfather had passed when I was very young, so unfortunately, memories of him are vague. But I do remember him as being hardworking and an honest man. Over the you years, could have just found I didn't a picture fully understand of an old it, man. but I slowly began to notice that something was off. One year, we had gone to visit her, and she didn't quite remember myself or my siblings. It's a strange feeling when a family member addresses you with a respectful but off-putting, and you are, line that I'm sure most relatives of dementia patients are accustomed to. Mm, yes. And then I realized what it was. Slowly, through subsequent visits, I began to notice things, like sticky notes explaining basic tasks like remembering to shut off light switches to close the front door to turn off the water how to flush the toilet family photos related oh, that sucks. And her once lively personality and slowly faded away she was trying she was trying so hard mm -hmm. to be her but this condition simply wouldn't let her you slowly turn back into your base and uh, bottom line 
everywhere at the end of time is a disturbingly bleak looking glass into the human mind. I mean, like, yeah, you just turn yourself, you, you just basically turn into what it means to be animal. You know, you just turn into the base self of yourself because you're no longer you. You, you try your best to cling on to whatever semblance of you you have left. Um, you try your best to remember things, you know, and it sucks because in the end, it's, it's, it's a losing battle. You cannot win this battle. It's an inevitability, and I hope that I will never have to experience anything like this in my life. Um, I'd rather die for, from a lightning strike than die from dementia. I'd rather go out in a blaze of glory than, you know, in some stupid disease decides to just end my life, you know. And I, I'm sure a lot of people would rather just die of old age, but, I mean, what does that really entail? You die from what? Heart disease. You die from what? Cancer. You die from dementia. I mean... Dying from old age. It's a, it's a vast goal you got there for yourself, bud. But if you can find peace in the fact that, I mean, the end is the end. And then the end is always final, finite. There's no point in trying to fight it. Then you will find peace within yourself. But I guess, you know, dementia just turns you into someone you're not. Which is not entirely true because you're still you. You just don't remember who you are. While it isn't creepy footage or a disturbing phone call, this single piece of art is one of the most real artistic expressions of a human condition that I've ever encountered. Life is fragile and beautiful, mm. and few things have stuck with me more than this. Nah, if you really. have a story I'm about a friend or relative that you'd like to share, feel free to leave it in a comment. Oh, yeah. While they might have forgotten due to circumstances out of their control, they surely won't be. Oh, no. Again. Legacies. Build a legacy. Make a legacy. Live your life. Do what you want. And uh, when your time comes, it's time. Don't fight it. Because then you'll go out with... That looks like Skittles. Then you'll go out with uh, the stress. Don't go out with the stress. Go out with peace. Or in a blaze of glory, as I might say. My stupid thoughts in my head. On the 22nd of May, 2011... A devastating EF-5 rated tornado ripped through the city of Joplin, Missouri. It lasted around 38 minutes and reached wind speeds of more or less I've 200 miles per this. hour. Is it the, the one? aftermath photos are grim. Oh, I gotta turn him back up because he's and no longer so too stupid loud. Videos. Is it? Does he? Does he have the exact video? For I the have past seen. couple of years now, I've gotten a few recommendations about covering this upload. And to be honest, is it? I never actually sat down and watched the entire thing all the way through. Is it the... Life and such just got in the way. But I digress. The video is titled First Person Video of Joplin, Missouri Tornado, created by a user named Izel SG. Dude, I got goosebumps right now. Very same day because if it's the video occurred. that I know of... Their description claims <laughs> that they took this footage inside of a fast trip gas station on East 20th okay, Street. Okay, never mind. It's not... Initially... They hid in the back of the store before taking refuge inside of the storage fridge. While there aren't many visuals within their recording, the audio conveys everything you need to know about being caught in a storm of this magnitude. Oh yeah. Have a listen. It's terrifying. You're at the base of mother nature. This is raw power. Uh, I, uh, at least probably 10 or 12. Five or six, seven, eight. There's probably eighteen or nineteen. Yeah, chin is getting real. Boom. 
Yeah. yeah. They said there was one. They said there was one on the ground at Seventh and yeah. Range Line. Yeah, but they, that's the one coming. Mm -hmm. This way on Twenty of them. Man, look at that. You got nothing? Yeah. Uh, no, they haven't yet. The sirens aren't going. But yeah, they did. What? Yeah, they Dude. did. That's as they, we were this coming crazy. in here. This is getting it real. It was real. Someone in. It is real. We need it. I'm trying to put less weight on him, though. Hey, are you okay? okay. Who's right here? Is that you right below? That's not the scariest one I've seen. I've seen scarier. I've seen way scarier ones. That one's very sad hearing, but I am very happy to hear of the people who, you know, you hear the men in the background trying to get everybody inside, you know, saying, get inside, Thankfully, get over here. Get everyone it, in that store was okay that day. Yeah. The same, unfortunately, couldn't be said about the others that came face to face with it. In total, the storm took 158 happy that they lives as, and left over 1,100 people injured. Considering the fact that the tornado the sirens children. fired off just 20 minutes before this happened, it makes me proud. it's safe to assume <laughs> that time to escape was minuscule. The incident in Joplin is haunting, and to date, it's cemented into history as the fourth deadliest tornado on record. Hopefully, 10 years later, they've recovered successfully and never, ever have to endure something close to this magnitude ever again. There's nothing you can do in that situation. There's nothing you can do. You are at the mercy of Mother Nature. There's nothing you can do. Is that Skittles? I don't know what that is. <laughs> it turns green and it looks like Skittles. Looks like a bag of Skittles. Every time I see it, I'm like, bag of Skittles? It's terrifying. It's terrifying. Life is terrifying. In 2012, a man had killed himself by the name of Israel Keys. Very beautiful. He was a serial killer, an arsonist, a bank robber, one of the worst types of people that exist. The reason for his suicide was because he was caught after a kidnapping and ransom attempt over 18 year old. Now, I'm sure there's much worse kind of people. Samantha Koenig of Anchorage, Alaska. You just don't know about them. This is his ransom photo That's proving that she was alive, to which, in exchange, he had demanded $30,000. That looks nothing like her. Except, in this photo, Samantha Koenig wasn't alive. Oh, she was dead. That sucks even more. Let's back up. So he killed her. And then try to get money for, her. or she tried to escape. He probably killed her. And then on the first of February, he was like, well, I got nothing else to do. Coding with this was working thing, so at a local coffee booth. Might as well just. She can try be seen on her. this CCTV footage, where everything seems fine. <sighs> sure. About two minutes into it, however, we can observe someone approach the window, to which she reacts with unease. Afterwards, we can see her hastily shut the lights off before carrying out his demands in the moment. Oh, he got gun. Got 
After some back and forth, she opens the register and can be seen taking out cash to give to the man. He then demands that she kneels before he enters through the window. And a few minutes later, he proceeds to escort her out of the trailer. After this moment, she was never seen again. As it turned out, her final moments were grim. Cool. Later that night, in that the back sucks. of his home, it was reported Life that sucks. he sexually assaulted her. <laughs> I can't. Her I can't. Had, I just can't. Killed her and placed her corpse in a shed. I just can't. I can't with this. Even more bizarrely, the day after, he took off it just to New makes Orleans me mad. where he went on a two-week cruise with his family. The entire time, I can't. I can't. Was I can't. I can't with this stuff. Was it just found. makes me mad. I can't empathize. I just get pissed Two off. weeks later, and he comes back from his trip. Her body's still in place, and so Keys dresses her up with makeup and sews her eyes open for a photo with a recent issue God, of the I can't. newspaper. I can't. I can't. He did this to invoke the belief that she was still alive. And like we established prior, he had put a $30,000 price tag on her. While this facade was happening, in reality, he had dumped her body in Matanuska Lake, a few miles north of Anchorage. Israel Keys was later caught. However, it wasn't what you'd expect. As it turned out, he'd taken off towards the mainland US, utilizing Koenig's bank card for cash withdrawals as if nothing happened. Because of this, Police were able to follow his trail and eventually tracked him down to a Cotton Patch Cafe in Lufkin, Texas. It was the morning of March 12th when Texas Ranger Stephen Rayburn would perform the arrest and afterwards, Keyes was promptly sent back to Alaska where he eventually confessed to not only this act, but numerous others. Again, this this kind of stuff makes me mad. But he and I don't talk, year, though, I just sit here found dead in his jail cell. and I can't, I can't, he I just can't. his wrists and tried to strangle himself. Leave him behind his own corpse Tried various to notes and drawings made in blood under a cell bed. himself? To this day, police are still frustrated by this now I'm confused. with his life went countless questions unanswered. Samantha Koning was just an ordinary person working her job as we all do. She didn't sign up for this. She didn't provoke anyone. And she sure as hell didn't deserve the fate that she was given. Well duh, no. What she thought would be just another night at work and devolved into a surreal night of hell. A night of hell that led to an injustice. And frustratingly, there's nothing that anyone can do. Yeah, and that's what makes to me ever bring mad. Her back. That's what makes me mad. I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm mad. I can't sympathize. I can't say the right things right now because I'm pissed off. Those kinds of things just... Again, Skittles. Nice. I just... I just, man, I just... I can't. I can't with those. I can't. I just... I just... I just get mad. I just get mad. And I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't stand that. On August 28th of 2009, a California Highway Patrol officer named Mark Saylor was Good on a drive music. in a Lexus sedan with his wife Cleofe, brother-in-law Chris, and daughter Mahala. They were heading northbound on California State Route 125 towards Mission Gorge Road in Santee. Bow, bow. While the circumstances outlined appeared to be ordinary, little did they know that their vehicle would lead to this venture being their last. Oh, did it like break At down? At around 7 p.m., a phone call was made to 911. It was from Chris, and he could be heard pleading for help since his car had malfunctioned. Hmm. Have a listen. Did he catch on fire and like blow up or something? Probably. It's my best guess. Is he like oh. nine one one emergency? What are you reporting? Yeah, we're the, we're the I'm, I'm sorry, your cell phone's cutting out. We're going north one twenty five. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Handbrake. Oh, Handbrake. Okay, northbound 125. Where are you passing? We are passing. Uh, where are we passing? We're, we're, we're going 120 Mission Gorge. We're in, we're in trouble. We can't. Well, there's no brakes. Okay. Handbrake. Okay, and you don't have the ability to like turn the vehicle off or anything. We're approaching the intersection. We're approaching the intersection. Okay. We're approaching the intersection. Hold on. Please. Please. Okay. Oh, shoot. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Hello? 
I, I guess the Lexix didn't have a handbrake or something. First tonight, we are hearing from the attorneys for both Bob Baker Lexus and the family of Officer Mark Saylor, who was killed along with his family in a fiery crash one year ago in Santee. Today, Toyota announced it had settled the lawsuit with the Saylor family, but 10 News has learned... As a result of this, everyone in that car lost their lives that night. The worst part about it is did, that the car wasn't even theirs. It was a loaner given to them by a nearby Lexus dealership. Did they... It was reported that the vehicle had reached a top speed of 120 miles per hour before crashing into a Ford Explorer and jumping off an embankment oh, near the Mission Gorge Road intersection. God! If, if anything like that ever started happening... I say screw it. I'm not going to put anybody else's life in danger. I'm driving into uh, the sidewall. I'm taking my car and I'm going to ram it against that sidewall and I'm going to ride that sidewall until my car either flips or I just freaking stop. Because I am not going to crash into someone else's car. I'm not going to potentially put someone else's life in danger. No, no, sir. No, sir. Or I'm going off-roading. I'm going off-roading, and I'm going to swerve that vehicle. I'm going to swerve it and hopefully tip it over. Hopefully it just tips over. That's all that happens. But, yeah, you're more likely to survive if the car is tumbling or if you swerve and the car falls over or flips or whatever. You're more likely to survive that than a full collision because you're because instead of going from uh 125 miles an hour to a full stop against a truck you're going from 125 miles an hour to a skid to a flip to a 70 to 30 60 whatever slow until stop um so you're more likely to survive but don't take that advice because that's just something i would probably do because uh, I wouldn't want to crash into someone. I'd rather risk my life than potentially hurt someone else's. I couldn't live with myself if I had killed someone and I survived. I, I, I couldn't. Section at the end of Highway 125. Witnesses claimed that the vehicle was thrown nearly 100 feet into the air before God. crashing into the ground and bursting into flames. God. After the incident... It was reported that the Explorer driver had suffered minor injuries and was promptly treated at a nearby hospital. For the family, it was believed that the accelerator had become stuck due to an engineering oversight in Lexus models that included rubber floor mats. Oh my god. After a myriad of other incidents related to this, Is that Lexus seriously eventually it? rolled out numerous recalls from the span of 2009 Is that what? to 2011. Most of which being related to the accelerator pedal. I'd be like, honey, hold the wheel. The sheer amount of issues and affected vehicles are staggering, too. On your screen God. is a list of the recalls they'd sent out. No and way. As you can see, a ton of them are related to the brakes or the accelerator pedal. By the end of it, over 5.2 million vehicles were affected, and in hindsight, it's safe to say that anyone driving a Lexus model from 2009 to 2011 were rightfully on edge. The families of the victims eventually filed numerous lawsuits against Did they Wayne, live? And as a result, they eventually came to a $10 million settlement. But you said everybody died. No oh, no, the families. It, though, no amount of money can bring someone back from a design failure that they had no control over. They didn't deserve to die that day. No. And his final 911 call will forever remain cemented into internet history as one of the most disturbing real-world examples of a simple weekend drive that shouldn't have ended the way it had. That's stupid. That's so stupid. God, I hate, I hate watching this. I don't want to even walk with this anymore. This is not what I thought it was. Like, the last one was interesting. This is, or the last one, the other one that I watched was interesting and... It was a good video. This is just this is just making me mad. And when I'm mad, I can't At think straight. And I can't. On the morning of September 29th of 2016, Pasacac Valley Line train 1614 departs the Spring Valley Station so in New stupid. York, heading southbound for the Hoboken Station in New Jersey. <sighs> One way, 
just the trip takes me. about an hour by train. Just and ignore on me. On board that morning were an estimated 250 passengers. Oh god, you're gonna have to ignore the me right a lot right now. is mostly okay, with nothing seeming awry. Time begins to pass, and train goers await the day of work ahead of them. What, another accelerator gets stuck this time? It can't stop? The train's approaching its destination. Being one of the busiest travel hubs in the region, Hoboken Station was lively as expected. The train approaches the terminal, and where it's typically required to stop, it doesn't. Okay, well, don't know why It maintains its full speed and crashes through the buffer stop at the end of the rail, causing passengers to be thrown throughout the cabin and forced into a manic frenzy with no clue on how to process it. We just kept going and going, no braking, no nothing. Jamie Weatherhead Saul claims. How fast is it? The moment feels like an eternity. At least, until gravity does what it does. The train comes to a halt past the rails and up against the terminal wall. And the normally busy and lively train station is now temporarily declared a disaster area. On this day, 114 passengers are injured and one loses their life. Okay. September 29th is now forever Again, associated with the tragedy. That one is very sad, but have happened. thank God it was only one. It could have been a lot worse. Could have been so much worse. God. If the thing were to catch on fire, if it could have been so much While worse. While this event is tragic so in and of itself. I, I mean, I am very disappointed that it was the mystery surrounding that someone did in fact die. To take root. It's better one Let's than... The entire train, just everybody's dead. That would, that would be horrible. Good morning from the wires of Associated Press and the WKTV. It's one day prior, God. the 28th. A central New Again, York TV it, station named WKTV was broadcast on the usual 6 p.m. How lineup. Did, how did that one person? I, I, I want to know more break, about that one however, person, and that's what sucks. Peculiar. I want to know more about that one station. person. I want to know. I want to know if they were just doing Let's something stupid. If they were just doing something stupid, and then and then and then the train hit something. If they were standing, maybe. I, I don't know. A hazardous material running for the United States. Infected until Huh? Huh? What? You know what? Authorities have issued a hazardous materials warning for the United States, huh? effective until September 29th, 2 16 a.m. Huh? Would you, could you, on a, on train, a train, wait for further... Interesting. Not only did they appear to be hacked, but of all things, it referenced a Dr. Seuss quote about a train. And the timing is striking. Immediately after, WKTV puts out numerous statements. From their Twitter... If you were watching our 6 p.m. newscast, you saw a hazardous materials warning message. There is no such warning. It was a technical error. And later that night, from their website. If you were watching our newscast around 6.17 p.m. or at 10.38 p.m., Ooh, I don't like this. you may have seen a hazardous materials warning crawl across your screen. There is no such warning. The message was an automated test which was not intended for public display. This message originated from FEMA as a test and had the national location code in it. Tests should not have that code as it's automatically retransmitted. We have contacted the New York State Broadcasters Association who administers the emergency alert system in New York. Sure. We're working with FEMA to resolve this. Sure. Our apologies for the confusion this may have caused. Oh, yeah. In total, there wasn't one, but two of these alerts. Oh. Unfortunately, that's where you I wasn't messed able up. to find footage of them separately. That's where However, you messed it's safe up. to assume that they were either the exact same or very similar. Ooh, that's where you messed up, dog. Interestingly, if we pick apart their wording, 
WKTV is mostly pinning the blame on FEMA, the yeah. Government Disaster Relief Program. An interesting claim, but perhaps that's all it was. Ah, uh, yeah. Sure, mate. Sure. One day later, and the train crash occurs. WKTV oh. releases yet another statement containing an update. FEMA replied that they did not send this out. They'll launch a full investigation into how their codes were hacked. WKTV seems to be the only target of this hack. For now, we've disabled right the, the codes next in our day? decoder that trigger this alert. If there's a real national alert, we'll still receive it from the local radio stations. Where God, I want to know about that one person. WKTV Can you tell me about that one person, dude? I want to know FEMA who they were. Providing information about our hardware, software, and Please. internet access, <laughs> and we'll provide log files from our devices. This information will be helpful to FEMA to track yeah, down the it's source one life, of this hack. But I mean, still, that life's important. Are you just not going to say anything about that the one person? That this was happening, other videos began to crop up, okay, showing strange whatever. alerts that had happened in places around the United States. Whatever. While these are indeed strange, he's not going to talk about it. Do hint at the possibility of a system-wide hack. The incident that occurred on WKTV Dude. was the only one of its kind to include this unusual Dr. Seuss quote. Anyone? Unfortunately, though. To hack, this day, hack, the origin yeah. and motive of why this happened, or who did it, has remained unsolved. Uh, I don't know. Of all the entries I've covered thus far on disturbing things, this is one of the most bewildering. It's confusing. Understandably, yeah, but since like, this occurred, conspiracy theories have cropped up yeah, all over the internet, go. theorizing on the potential of the train operator being complicit and entertaining the idea that the crash was somehow planned by some external party. Was it the train operator who died? While I personally don't subscribe to these, what I do find highly unusual is the timing. If so, rest in peace, my and good sir. I don't sir. think I'll ever be able to shake that. I hope you died quickly. And painlessly, but... Was it the train operator? Did he, like, try a final ditch effort, try and stop the train, and just ended up hurting himself? An audible simulation. Mother Nature's Wrath. God, yeah. A nightmarish abduction. That one's... A disturbing plea for help. <laughs> and an eerie broadcast alert. That one's eh. The world could be a depressing... Again, I wish he would have told me about... ...disturbing place. ...who it was. Tonight's topics are top Oh, is that it? Oh, you... Oh, you... What? monitor is synced to her cell phone. Okay, okay, so this is... This, Billings it's, Police it's, Department. It's not, over. it's not over. It's not over. Occurs in Billings Heights, it's not over. Okay, there's there's one more. There's one more. I'm excited. It's the 23rd of February, why. 2017. They're always bad. A normally criminal someone's trespassing dead. incident occurs in Billings Heights, Montana. <laughs> I'm not excited anymore. Case number 17.12420. Alright, is this real? Department takes to Facebook soon after to ask for the public's help and tracking down this mysterious individual that, considering what he'd done, what did he do? is every parent's worst nightmare. Oh, don't you dare. The Billings Police Department is asking for the public to be aware of an incident that took place last week don't in you the dare. Billings Heights. On the above date and time, officers responded to a possible burglary in progress. The female resident reported to officers as she observed a male subject in her infant daughter's bedroom on the baby monitor. The victim said she immediately went to her daughter's bedroom, removed her daughter, and left the residence. When officers arrived, the residence and neighborhood were searched, but the suspect was not located. The this victim is... said that the baby monitor is synced to her cell phone. The baby monitor is motion activated and took the attached photo of the suspect, which alerted her cell phone. And that photo is this one. You. To date, this mysterious intruder has never been found. Why? What is wrong with people? What is wrong with people? Seriously. The world can be a depressing, creepy, God. and disturbing place. And tonight's topics encapsulated that. You and I just dove into six disturbing things from around the internet. Yeah, you'd say so. I hope you all enjoyed this. And if you have any... I didn't enjoy this. Well, I did it a little bit. It was very informative and I'm very thankful that, you know, I got to watch it. But... <clears throat> Alright, whatever. Whatever. Stay strong, everyone. Stay safe. Blah, blah, blah. Mmm. <clears throat> 
This stuff, this stuff just makes me mad. It just makes me mad, man. I just... And then I just get depressed. And it sucks. I don't even know if I want to upload this one. I don't want to. But it was someone's suggestion, so... I'll upload it. Stay strong, everyone. Stay safe. Free sleep. Wear your helmet. Wear your mask. Don't put the flashlight behind you. Don't look in the haunted mirrors. And as always, have a nice day. I hate this. I hate that. I hate that. <laughs>